Hey friends, it's me again. It's day three. Day three of our online distance learning. So let's go ahead and jump into our lesson for today. So first of all, let's review what we're learning about. So we're learning about traits and we're learning about how these traits get passed down from one generation to the next. Now we learned about Gregor Mendel, that cool scientist who started mixing pea plants together to see how traits would get passed down from one generation to the next. Now, we learned about a special tool that Mendel uses in order to predict what the offspring or the baby pea plants will look like after he's crossed two different pea plants. Does anybody remember what that special tool is called? Think about it. If you're thinking Punnett square, you're absolutely correct. So Gregor Mendel used a Punnett square in order to predict what offspring would look like if he crossed two individuals. So what we're going to be doing today is we are going to review your homework problem, problems, oops, your homework problems from last night. Before we do that though, let's remind ourselves of what a Punnett square looks like. We're going to be using the fancy screen again today. So here we go. So remember, a Punnett square is exactly what it says, a square. So we have a square. And then inside of that square, we make four smaller squares. And that's it. A Punnett square just looks like a window. So there's our Punnett square. All right. For our first homework problem last night, we were using the letter T. So for our first organism, it was homozygous dominant. Homo means same, dominant means big. So we're going to have two big T's. Our second organism was homozygous recessive. Homo means same, recessive means small. So we're going to have two little T's. Now it's time to set up our Punnett square. There's our Punnett square. We're going to put our homozygous dominant on top. And our homozygous recessive on the side. For your homework, you should have dropped them low. And you should have carried them across. And friends, that's the first Punnett square. This is what your homework should have looked like for problem number one. Great, let's do the second one. Ta -da. So our second example, we were looking at a heterozygous organism and a heterozygous organism. So our first organism was heterozygous. Hetero means different. And we were using the letter E. So we have different, which means we're going to have one big and one little. And then our other organism was also heterozygous. So we're going to have one big and one little. Perfect. So now let's make our Punnett square and see what happens when we cross these individuals. There's my Punnett square. It looks the same every single time. I am going to put my first organism at the top. My second organism on the side. And now it's time to complete the Punnett square. Here we go. We're going to drop it low to both boxes and we're going to drop the little e low to both boxes. Now we are going to carry these across and your Punnett square should look like that. There's our second Punnett square. Great, time to look at the third one. So our third problem, we had something different here. We were crossing a heterozygous organism with a homozygous recessive organism. So first let's look at the first one, heterozygous. 
Hetero means different. Now, for this one, I didn't give you letters, so let's make up some letters. I'm going to use the letter B. So our first organism is heterozygous. So I'm going to go big B, little b. And my second organism was homozygous recessive. Homo means same. Recessive means little. So I'm going to have little b, little b. Perfect. Let's make that Punnett square. There's my Punnett square. Same every single time. Where am I going to put the big B, little b? Up at the top. Where am I going to put my little b, little b? On the side. Same thing every single time, friends. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So here we go. I'm going to drop the big B low. Drop the little B low. And now I am going to carry my bees across. Carry my bees across. And that's what your third Punnett square should have looked like. Are you guys starting to get the hang of this? It's actually pretty simple once you do a few of them. All right, time to do the last Punnett square. Here we go. All right, so our first organism was a homozygous dominant organism. Homo means same, dominant means big. What letter should we use for this one? I'm going to use the letter R. So we have homozygous dominant. Big R, big R. And I'm crossing that with another homozygous dominant. So I'm going to have another big R, big R. Now, friends, I challenge you, before I even do this Punnett square, looking at these letters here, what do you think all of the offspring are going to have? Do you think you can guess? Well, let's figure it out. Let's make the Punnett square. Same thing every time. We're going to put the big R's, oops, and the big R. And we're going to have another big R and another big R. Drop it low, drop it low, drop it low, drop it low. Carry across, carry across. Carry across, carry across. Friends, what do all of these offspring have? They all have big R's. When you cross two organisms that have the exact same genotype, because remember the letters make up the genotype, when these organisms have the exact same genotypes and they're both dominant, we end up with all babies that have the same genotype as the parents. All right, friends, let's clear that board. Now that we understand how to make a Punnett square, we want to understand why these Punnett squares are helpful and what they can help us better understand. So let's look at Gregor Mendel's pea plants. So we're going to be looking at plants today. Well, not literally, but we're going to use plants as an example. So we're talking about plants. Gregor Mendel was looking at pea plants. Now, let's look specifically at how tall plants can be. So we're going to be looking at plant height. All right? Now, for plant height, you can have two different phenotypes. Plants can either be tall or they could be short. When they're tall, they have a certain genotype. And when they're short, they have a certain genotype. Remember, this is how they look. But what are the letters or the genotype inside of their body that are telling them that they should look that way? So let's look at the letter T here. So let's use the letter T, okay? When a plant is tall, it could have the genotype big T, big T. 
When a plant is short, it would have the genotype little t, little t. Because these are weaker, so we have short. These are stronger, so we have tall. But there's one more genotype that could exist. It could be big T, little t. Where does that one belong? Is big T, little t a tall plant or a short plant? Well, the big T represents tall. The little t represents short. We said that the dominant covers or masks the recessive. The big covers the little. So in this case, if this letter is blocking that letter, then our plant would be tall. So clear the board. So that means a tall plant could either have the genotype big T, big T, or it could have the genotype big T, little t. And a short plant can only have little t, little t. So now let's make a Punnett square. No, we're going to stick with black. Okay. So now with this information, let's look back to our first homework problem. In our first homework problem, we were crossing a homozygous dominant organism with a homozygous recessive organism. Now remember, we dropped it low and we carried it across. Now, looking at this Punnett square here, what phenotype will all of the babies have? Well, let's see here. In this Punnett square, we have one big T little t, another one, another one, and another one. So out of four squares, four out of four squares are big T little t. And you know what that means? Big T, little t is tall. So that means four out of the four babies, they'd be tall. And friends, this is what you are going to do for your homework tonight. You're going to look back at the four homework problems and you're going to add an extra step to it. You're going to count how many of the boxes have this genotype and then you're going to tell me what the phenotype is. So you're gonna tell me the genotype and the phenotype. Let's do another one together. Clear the board. So let's look at another example together. Let's say we wanna look at the color of leaves. So our trait we're looking at is color of leaves. Now in our results, there were two color of leaves that you could have. Uh, you could either have green or you could have white. Now, when a result had green leaves, it could have had two genotypes. Could have had big G, big G, or big G, little g. Those are the two possible genotypes for green leaves. For white leaves, there's only one kind of genotype and that's little g, little g. So this is the dominant trait, and this is the recessive trait. Now, let's say I'm crossing, oh, that's a really small Punnett square. Let's make my Punnett square bigger, because that was way too small. Let's try that again. Let's say I would like to cross an organism that is a big G, little g, and an organism that is big G, little g. I'm going to drop it low, and I'm going to carry across. So there's my Punnett square. 
So now I need to break down the genotypes and the phenotypes. So here we go. It's gonna get a little complicated. So stay with me. Let's take a quick second. Shake it all out. All right, here we go. So first of all, we have green, which is big G, big G, or big G, little G. Hmm. Okay, so we have one big G, big G. We have two big G, little Gs. There's big G, little G, big G, little G, hold big G, little G. We have two of those one of these and we have one little g little g big g big g equals green big g little g green and little g little g white so friends there's my breakdown all I have to do is write down the genotypes and write down what the phenotype will be for that genotype. This is what you're doing for all of your homework problems tonight. You already did the Punnett square. Now you just need to figure out what that genotype means. I know this is kind of confusing. It's a lot to do, especially over the computer, but I believe in you guys and I know you can do it. So try your best. And if you need to reach out to me, I will be available for office hours uh, from 1 to 3 o'clock. 1 to 2 o'clock is for 6th grade, and 2 to 3 o'clock is for 5th grade. So feel free to message me or call me if you have any questions at all. Your homework is in the description below, so check out your homework, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.